Hello, I'm the Reverend Elaine Yavazak, and today is going to be quite a serious topic. But very laid back as I revert back to the place of my kickstart of my ministry. Ten years ago, I did my first video here in my living room in my bathrobe. I am doing the same today, so sit back as we have coffee time together or any other beverage of your choice. As I will tell you about what I experienced during videotaping one of my sermons. Here's my Revelation Facebook merch, my coffee mug. March 5th, 2014 is when I became an ordained pastor and started my ministry, Revelation Facebook. A couple of years later, I partnered with another person in India. Five years later, I began my music ministry, Studio 7. My video entitled Seventh Video for Revelation Facebook, Deception Part 4, The New Christian Left, I had a rather strange experience. I put the link in the description below if you would like to see that one later. Satan knew that I don't hesitate preaching about hell and truth. The things I said in that 41 minute video he did not want others to hear. Jesus himself preached more about hell than heaven. There are many pastors today whom the devil adores as some of these pastors don't believe hell exists and wants to lead people astray. There are also some pip there are also some pastors who don't think that homosexuality is a sin. In my video that I uploaded to YouTube on Friday, March 27th, 2015, Satan showed me his anger towards me. Let me just say for the record that speaking in front of a camera doesn't make me the least bit nervous whatsoever. Satan heard me practicing my sermon before I went on camera and I began to feel some of his anger after I hit the record button. I didn't realize what it was right away. I thought perhaps I'm just a little tongue-tied, which can happen to anyone. I mentioned a few times in the video that I felt something was a little off. As I got a little further into my sermon, then I knew exactly what it was. Demonic attack. The back of my neck started itching as though something was rubbing it with an irritant. I kept on speaking until I felt a sensation as though something was squeezing my neck. <clears throat> it got so bad that I could hardly speak. Now I knew what I had to do. I shut the camera off and tried to speak as best I could as I rebuked Satan in the name of Jesus. I knew my faith was solid enough to do this. I think Satan thought that since I was a new pastor, he could defeat me. I certainly proved him wrong. As I repeated those words rebuking him, my, vo my voice was normal again. After that, whatever was hindering me left very quickly and I was able to continue. This incident never happened again. Satan knows he cannot mess with me, so what does he do? He goes after other people to see who will fulfill his wishes. Then, after Satan uses people to cause trouble for me, I distance myself from them and pray for them. Perhaps for my next 10 year anniversary in my ministry, things will be different, or maybe not. The reason why I shut off the camera when I could hardly speak, I didn't want people to think I was having a partial stroke. It could have easily been mistaken as such. You will hear a few times in the video as I mention that something is giving me a difficult time, but I kept my wits about me as I wasn't scared at all. There was a time when another pastor in a church was to preach about how bad Satan is. Right before his sermon, the microphone stopped working, so he had to preach using only his voice with no amplification. 
Immediately after his sermon, the microphones worked again. Coincidence? What are your thoughts? There was another pastor who had something going on during his sermon. Suddenly, he stopped speaking and just remained still for a while, staring straight ahead. Then it seemed like he snapped out of a trance and completely forgot what he was talking about. Folks, the devil is real and he doesn't like pastors who preach truth. Also, people who are into witchcraft, candle magic, seances, fortune telling, etc. are doing something very dangerous. They invite evil spirits and these spirits would feel welcome in this environment. God forbids such activity. After 10 years of ministry, it dawned on me that there is a deep connection of that horrible experience to the way many of my friends and relatives react toward me whenever I mention my ministry. I have confronted some of these people who obviously dislike my ministry. One friend I saw in the store asked me where I presently work. After telling her I'm a pastor, she looked at me like, It looked like something squished her mouth shut before she changed the subject. Someone else asked me on Facebook what I'm doing now. I told her about my ministry and she changed the subject. Days later, I sent her one of my Christian music videos as she is a Christian herself. I never got a response from her again. It was like she was silenced. Another person followed me a second time on Instagram after I took him off. He is also a Christian and I sent him one of my Christian music videos. What did I get from him? What do you think? Complete silence. A couple of weeks later I wrote to him saying, and I quote, you probably don't want to follow me here on Instagram because now I only post my music and ministry videos. Guess what kind of response I got from him? Once again, complete silence. Is there a name for this? Should this be called the sat satanic gag order? Do you see the pattern here? I would say those scenarios are examples of demonic influence. I've also seen a consistent pattern on Facebook. Now keep in mind, these are all Christians whom I have known most of my life. They would only click like on silly posts of food or animals, etc. They would never click like on anything that has to do with my ministry. Before I go on, let me explain that lately I have purposely changed my Facebook settings so my ministry haters can only see posts that are of my ministry and nothing else. Of course, they no longer click like on anything because they wouldn't dare click like on anything that has to do with my sermons or videos. One person did click like not knowing that the photo she clicked like on was a still shot of one of my videos. I don't have the heart to tell her that because she would feel very sick if she ever found out and I don't want to make anyone sick. I have prayed many times for God to reveal to me why so many of the people I know have such a deep aversion towards my ministry. I have heard that when Satan fails to destroy someone, he goes after others to make his wishes come true. This is known as spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is a Christian concept of fighting against the work of, of pre preternatural evil forces. It is based on the biblical belief in evil spirits or demons that are said to intervene in human affairs in various ways. Satan used one of my friends to interfere with one of my broadcasts after I told her not to call me on a specific day. She promised me she wouldn't interfere. 
Instead, she interrupted calling me three times that day. Three times a charm. I heard from a very reliable source that my friend suffers from jealousy. Here I was getting answers from someone as I believe God used this person to reveal to me what is really going on. There was another person who would never like my ministry post on Instagram but liked everything else and he even told me himself that he is jealous that I have a better keyboard than him. I have grown out of jealousy before I reached adulthood and uploaded a video on this. Let me ask you something. What is more dangerous, anger or jealousy? What do you think the answer is based on the Bible? The answer may surprise you. Anger or wrath are outwardly expressions and even if they are bad, they don't cause as much damage to an individual as jealousy. Anger and wrath are effects and not the cause. Jealousy, on the other hand, hollows you out slowly. It can be the cause for anger or wrath and even bad if it doesn't find an expression. What does the Bible say? Proverbs 27, 4 says, an angry person is dangerous, but a jealous person is even worse. You're probably wondering why that is so. Being jealous usually leads to sinful acts. Like the example of my friend interfering with my broadcast after she promised not to. I also found out she has lied to me numerous times, suddenly calling herself a prophetess, sent me a sympathy card nine years after my brother's death. I made it clear to her that I've been at peace after he passed on. She also sent me some questionable things in the mail that I felt too dangerous to open and wrote, return to sender. She keeps trying to contact me, but I cannot deal with her jealousy and lies. Jealousy is also known as a spiritual disease. This person would abuse the phrase, I love you many times and we know we need to watch out for such people. Constantly assigning Bible verses to people I feel is somewhat hypocritical coming from this individual. She needs to practice what she preaches. She's not a preacher. I'm all for quoting scripture and it is a must in sermons, otherwise a sermon wouldn't be a sermon. But this person does it to excess and lied to me about so many things. Then there is this inconsistency. She would fluctuate her opinion about women being allowed to be pastors. First she says she's against it as she stood three feet in front of me and later she would deny saying it. You don't know what she will say about it the next day. Let's say someone is jealous of someone's job promotion. A jealous person would think he or she is better than the one who got the promotion. That leads to another extremely dangerous sin called pride. Pride is what got the angel of light known as Satan kicked out of heaven. God hates pride. How sad that everyone I'm talking about here calls themselves Christians. I'm not judging anyone. I just say it from seeing the evidence. I'm not perfect either. I have flaws just as much as anyone else. But has it ever occurred to these people that despite the direction this world is going, I remain steadfast in preaching truth, even though I know what I preach is the least bit popular? Before I began my ministry, I thought I would find preaching to be the most difficult part and speaking to unbelievers. I have found those things to be easy in comparison to dealing with these Christians who claim to love me as a person but despises the fact that I'm a pastor. How do I treat them now? I distance myself from them and pray for them. Ephesians 5.11 says, take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. 
If the fear of me asking people for money is what keeps them silent about my ministry, I will repeat myself again as I have in other videos. I would never, ever ask anyone for a single cent. If someone did give me money, I would return every cent right back to that person in the blink of an eye. My ministry is self-sufficient and I would rather cut off one of my fingers before asking anyone for money. If I had a friend or relative who became a pastor, male or female, I would give them my utmost support without a shout of a doubt. Why? Because it is the right thing to do. I've also seen some people close to me never sharing a single one of my videos on social media. Instead, they post numerous videos of other pastors, churches, etc. What is the reason that hinders you to share a video showing me playing a Christian song when you post many other Christian songs? Do you have an aversion to small ministries? What do you require of me for you to post my work on your timeline? Do I have to be rich or famous? Shame on you if those are your requirements. You are under demonic influence and don't even know it. Have you tried doing a video yourself? It doesn't have to be long. You can share your testimony or read from the Bible. A two to five minute video I'm sure you're able to do. You don't have to be a pastor to make a video. There are many hardened hearts of unbelievers who don't believe in God as they believe they will see heaven based on their good deeds. I believe that's another example of demonic influence. I've also had discussions with people who are against women pastors. I've done a sermon on that too. I suppose those people would like to omit this verse. Galatians 3:28, which says, There is no longer Jew nor Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. That verse is very clear. There is little doubt about the point Paul is making. In Christ, we are all the same. We are equal with one another. I have made many new friends who appreciate what I do and I am very thankful for each and every one of them. Resurrection Sunday will soon be upon us. More music is on the way along with the sermon that is going to be done quite differently. It will be presented in a different format. I'm sure you'll find it uplifting and inspirational. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.